for number one, we have two linear inequalities. We're going to work on them one at a time. And I'll show you, you know, on Desmos, we know it's going to do the job for us, like, super easy, barely an inconvenience. But here we're going to just take it as if, it, like, we're a question on the Regents exam. You know, got to do it out by hand. So let's subtract 2x. We want to get y alone. But not only do we want to get y alone, we want to get y alone and also on the left-hand side of the inequality. All right, fortunately, it's already on the left, so we're good there. Right. So we have negative y. Once I subtract the 2x, we have negative y less than negative 2x plus 3. If I want to get that y by itself, I need to either multiply or divide both sides by a negative 1. All right, you take your pick. It doesn't make a difference. But just remember, with an inequality, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you reverse the direction of the sign. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply. I'll multiply both sides by negative 1. That will give me y greater than, and we have to distribute that negative 1, so 2x minus 3. All right. So just like we would for a linear equation, we're getting y by itself. All right. We have a y-intercept of negative 3. So I'll go down 3 units and I'll plot a point. We have a slope of 2. Slope of 2 is change y over change in x of 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1. So up 2 to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. Repeat that process or that pattern over and over again until you complete the graph, go in the opposite direction. Now this is a greater than symbol, greater than or less than symbols, get dashed lines. All right, so greater than or less than gets a dashed line. So I'm, I gotta draw it solid and then erase, but you get the idea. All right, so dash, 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 dash. Now we just have to decide on shading. All right, so for the shading part of it, I just use a test value. Now that test value could be whatever you want, but the more convenient the value, the better off you're going to be. So here I would test 0, 0, because 0, 0 is not on the line. And so if I get a true sentence, I would shade the side of the line that includes 0, 0. If I get a false one, I would shade the opposite side. All right, so instead of y greater than 2x minus 3, I'll say 0 is greater than 2 times 0 minus 3. All right, just replacing the x and y with a 0 and a 0. All right, so I get as a result 0 greater than negative 3, which is a true sentence. So that's telling me that I'm going to shade this part of the graph, the part that includes the zero, zero. All right, so we have that part accounted for. Now I just have to address the other inequality. Now, you could also, without using the test points, determine the shading based off of the nature of the inequality. So if you have a greater than or greater than or equal, that's telling you to shade to the right or above the graph. All right? The problem is sometimes that could be confusing because in this case it's like, well, which one is it, the right or, the, or above? All right? It seems to be in conflict. All right, so the only time to the right would apply is if it's a vertical line. So generally, if you see greater than or greater than or equal, we shade above the line. If you see a less than or a less than or equal, you shade below the line. Unless it's the vertical, in which case it's the right and left business. But I think that's a little bit more obvious. My, 
I don't know why I made my greater than or equal like this. So shade below the line. All right. That helps you avoid having to do the test point approach. So looking at my second equation, uh, inequality, sorry. It's not an equation. I keep saying equation, but it's not an equation. Do we get the hour back? That's something. Get that over the weekend. Need it. Need it. That one extra hour of sleep just makes everything so much better. So anyway, for the second equation, I'm going to subtract the 4x. This one's much easier. Subtract the 4x. We got 3y greater than or equal to negative 4x. I'm going to divide out the 3. And I'll be looking at y greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x. All right, no sign change. We don't even have a y-intercept to worry about here. All right, so when I graph this one, well, we do have a y-intercept. It's just not obvious. It's, it's the origin. You know, it's in the equation, there's an implied plus zero there. If there's no plus anything, if it's not anything that's that's written out and obvious in front of you, then you would say that it's the origin because it's an implied plus zero. So I'd plot a point here. You can go down one, two, three, four, over to the right, one, two, three. Plot a point, do it again. and then repeat the process until you run out of space. And then when you run out of space, just go in the opposite direction. Now this one gets a solid line because it's a greater than or equal. All right, so it's a question of shading now. All right, now what I'm gonna do just to kind of make this a little less messy I'm just going to get this out of here for a sec. All right, if we're using the test point approach, just move this down and get it over there. It's fine. If we're using the test point approach here and go back to my original equation, or I could use a simplified one. It really doesn't matter. Maybe you want to use a simplified. It, it might make things easier. But the simplified one has a fraction in it. So if you have a choice in the matter, maybe you stay away from that. But again, you want to pick a point, a nice convenient point that's not on the line, all right? Zero, zero is my go-to, but unfortunately it's actually on the line. So I can't use zero, zero here. So I would test something else. Next best thing, one, zero. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know why he's not seeking medical attention right now. <laughs> and also, like, I mean, I don't want to be the mask police right now, but I would have really just loved it if he had his mask on when he was hacking up a lung like that. <laughs> That was, that was disgusting. So quick sidebar. Today I witnessed somebody come into class, rip down their mask and have a conversation with somebody else. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't know if you know how sound works, but you, could, you, you don't need to take your mask down in order to talk to people. But, you know, sometimes it's easier. And when you're really excited, I guess it's like, guess what, rip. I have stuff to say. So there's that part of it. No signal. Then immediately after that, and, and this person came into class late. So I'm thinking about all the things that could have happened prior to this individual coming into the room, comes in the room, does that whole mass rip down thing. And then while the mass is down, Biggest sneeze I've ever seen in my life. 
followed up by the most boisterous nose blowing that I've ever witnessed also. And I'm like, why, why is this happening? And, and I'm looking at this person, I'm like, get, get out. Like, like, go, like, why are you in here? There's like 30 people in this room and you just like, hey, guess what, everybody? I just wanted to take every, every germ that I have in my body and just, here you go. <laughs> Here's a little for you, a little bit more for you. Hey, 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 I don't want you to think I missed you back there. Come here, I got something for you. It was disgusting. Ugh. I don't know, I mean, maybe you wanted to save the mask. Yeah, Cause I, I've seen that last year, that was a big battle. Like right in the beginning of the year, I'd have students that were about to sneeze, first thing they would do, rip the mask off and then sneeze all over the place. And it's like, okay, I understand. If that's your only mask, your instinct is like, I'm not wearing this the rest of the day with what just came out of my nose in there. I mean, I, like, I don't know what else to, to say about that one. And like, I mean, you go out of the classroom at a full sprint, hoping to get to the bathroom in time to sneeze. I, I don't know. And then what would happen there? Open the bathroom door, achoo, everywhere. And, and you know, there's somebody right on the other side of that door that you're just spraying. So yeah, it's a, it's a losing proposition, but that out in the hall, that was for show. <laughs> That's a person being like, Hey everybody, I just want to let you know that I am, I'm here, and I am gross. All right, so you know how anything taken out of context could be a problem. I have to now edit this video because... <laughs> <laughs> that could be rough. Anyway, you plug in the one, you plug in the zero, that's fun. So zero goes in for Y. The one goes in for X. Zero is indeed bigger than negative four thirds. So that's a true sentence. All right, so one zero is on this side. So it's in this neighborhood over here. So I should be shading my graph. And I'll use whatever that color is, some kind of peachish, orangish, skin, skin, color. skin, color. skin well, depends. I got I got to tell you, my mind doesn't look anything like that, so. Mine looks more like the background. So, this is what it is. So anyway, we got this in conjunction with the other one. And now we have a little bit of an overlap and the overlap is what we're going for here. And that overlap is our solution. All right. So that's all well and good if you have the ability to copy and paste highlight drag it all around your screen and then put it all back in and overlay it and make it look nice. If you don't have that ability, then that's, then you're in a different situation. So let's take a look at the one below it that has, well, it's got three pieces to it, but it's still the same idea. We have two lines that are diagonal in some capacity. And then the last one, y greater than or equal to zero, that's gonna be a horizontal line. All right, so, but both of these first two lines should be pretty easy to graph. So the first one's ready to rock and roll. Y equals X plus four. All right, so I'm gonna just draw a line, solid line because it's a greater than, greater than or equal to symbol. All right, the second one, I just wanna, I wanna rewrite it a little bit first y less than or equal to negative x plus four. All right, so same y-intercept, but this time the slope is negative one. So go up to four and then go down one, right one. Also a solid line.
Then the last one, that's the horizontal, because any, any equation in the form of y equals, whether it's y equals zero or otherwise, is just going to be a horizontal line. It's just a question of where. All right. The y value is zero, putting it on the x-axis. So that would be here. All right. Also a solid line. All right. So when I graph this, or I'm sorry, when I shade this, I want to be thinking of shading below because of the less than part of the less than or equal. So below the red line, below the purple line. Oh, actually, that one should be the black one. Hold on, hold on. Going back. Undo, undo. So that below this one, but then above, above the horizontal line. All right. So if I'm thinking about a region that would be below the red line, you have choices, right? I could be looking at this part of the graph, or I could be looking at this part of the graph, right? You just ask yourself, well, which one is below the line? You know, this doesn't look like it's below the line. This one does. This, this region looks like it's below the line, all right? And then you would do the same thing for the black line. Again, asking yourself which, which region is below. This looks like it's above. This looks like it's below. So this region over here. Then the horizontal line, again, same idea. Two possibilities, this region that looks like it's above the line, and this region, which looks like it's below the line. All right? So I want to be below the black, below the red, but above the purple. So that looks like it's going to put me right inside that triangle. So without doing double and triple shading, I can just go right to shading the final answer, the final solution to the problem. And let's go with that. Nah. All right. And that's really all there is to it. You know, you could do the test points, but it ends up being kind of unnecessary because you could just sort of play it out based off of the, the direction of the inequality. Now, if you don't have your inequality in the proper format, y on the left and everything else on the right, then this whole system falls apart. So you got to make sure it's in the proper format. But if you do that, then the payoff is that you can get right to the shading very quickly. All that being said, I don't think there's going to be anything quicker than doing it on Desmos. So this is kind of a mess, but if you look at it carefully enough, you see that the part that's the most shaded is the part that's in that triangle in the middle. All right, and that's the only part that we care about. Uh, the rest of the assignment is pretty much along the same lines as this. One thing I'll say is that uh, th there are some references to the different quadrants in a graph. So I just wanted to refresh your memories on that. The first quadrant is the upper right-hand corner. The second quadrant, upper left-hand corner. Third quadrant, lower left. And fourth quadrant, lower right. All right. So it always, you always start in the upper right-hand corner when it comes to graphing, and then work your way around in a counterclockwise fashion. All right. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because on the next page there's a there's a couple of questions that refer to quadrant one, quadrant two, things like that. All right.